The nesting instincts of budgies are truly remarkable. Some budgies may turn to chewing or pecking at various surfaces, including walls, tree trunks, or even furniture. Breeding budgies in an aviary can pose risks, including potential fights among females that may lead to harm or even death. I saw my two females battling for a nest that Angel and Bella made in the wall of the aviary. To ensure their safety, I've decided to separate Angel and Stubby, placing them in their own dedicated breeding cage. In my previous video, I crafted a nest box using a 3D printer, and now it's the perfect moment to put it to use. The female wasted no time and immediately started preparing the nest box for the upcoming eggs. During the breeding period, the female receives her greatest support from Stubby, the male. After Angel ensured the structure's integrity and safety, and I didn't have to wait long. We've already got our first egg. Stubby continues to be a great husband, showing affection by kissing and feeding the female. Expect an egg from the female every other day. Laying an egg is physically demanding for the female, requiring a lot of energy. However, she typically recovers in just a few minutes. It's crucial to provide proper nutrition and a healthy diet during the breeding season. Sitting on her eggs is to maintain the eggs at a constant temperature, approximately 98.6 Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. The incubation period for budgie eggs is approximately 18 to 21 days. Both the female and in some cases the male budgie may turn the eggs regularly to prevent the embryos from sticking to the inner membrane of the eggshell. The number of eggs laid can vary, but typically falls within a range of four to eight eggs. She stopped laying eggs after reaching a total of six. Budgie eggs are relatively small, measuring about 0.8 to 1 inch, 2 to 2.5 centimeters in length. They are oval shaped. Budgie females can sometimes experience egg binding, a condition where an egg gets stuck in the reproductive tract. This is a medical emergency and requires immediate veterinary attention. The primary cause is often related to diet. That's why I make sure to provide liquid vitamins and minerals along with plenty of vegetables and fruits to keep my budgies healthy and prevent such issues. Not all eggs are fertile, but I can easily check their fertility using a simple method called egg candling. Candling budgie eggs is a method used to monitor the development of the embryos inside. This is done by shining a bright light through the eggshell to observe the contents. Fertile eggs will often show a network of blood vessels spreading out from a central point. This is a positive sign of embryo development. If the egg is completely clear with no signs of development, it is likely unfertilized. On the first day, the embryo is usually not visible yet. As you near the final week of incubation, you'll notice the embryo's continued growth, often accompanied by increased movement within the egg.
You may see it taking up nearly all the space inside the egg. Not much development is visible on the second day. The yolk may remain the most prominent feature and a faint shadow may start forming around it. This may be around nine day old. The blood vessels are still visible but may become less prominent as the chick fills the available space. The chick's heart beats and this pumping action causes movement of the blood through the blood vessels. As a responsible pet owner, it's essential to provide a well-balanced and diverse diet for your breeding pairs. Neglect or improper care can negatively impact their lives and the well-being of the chicks. While budgies primarily feed on seeds, introducing a variety of vegetables can be a beneficial addition to their diet. Budgie parents will feed their chicks a specialized mix of partially digested seeds and other nutrients. They will regurgitate this mixture into the chick's beak. Many pet stores carry specialized breeding food for budgies, including dried eggs, a great addition to your vegetable mix. Don't leave fruits or vegetables in the cage for extended periods. Remove them after an hour or two to prevent moldy food, which can pose significant health risks to budgies. Budgie eggs typically hatch approximately 18 to 21 days after they are laid. Look, an astronaut budgie! I will help you, little one. And he already made a mess. Hatching can be a delicate process and intervening too soon or too forcefully can harm the chick. If the chick appears to be struggling and hasn't made progress after several hours, you can consider assisting it. Be extremely gentle to avoid injuring the chick. Baby budgies are tiny, measuring just a few centimeters in length. Their eyes are closed and they are covered in soft, downy feathers that can be pale or even translucent in color. Budgies sometimes consume the eggshell for its calcium content, which can help replenish their calcium levels after laying and incubating eggs. On the second day, I use my Creality Hallet Mage Pro 3D printer to create a scaled model of the fort, providing a useful reference for tracking the growth of the baby budgies. The female budgie spends a significant amount of time in the nest, showcasing her dedication as a nurturing mother. On the third day, we welcomed one more adorable baby budgie into the world. The chicks grow at an astonishing pace, and you can easily spot the size difference between the babies that hatched just two days apart. Their eyes are still closed, and they are highly dependent on their parents for warmth, food, and care. The male and female parents take turns feeding the chicks with regurgitated food. Typically, it's the female that takes the lead in feeding the chicks, with the male primarily focused on feeding the female. On day four for the first baby budgie and day two for the second, you can already notice a noticeable size difference between them. They've become more active and chirpy. The yellow sac you're observing under the head of a baby budgie is called the crop. When the parent budgie regurgitates food to feed its chicks, the food accumulates in the crop.
This is why you may see a swollen, yellowish area under the chick's throat after it has been fed. During the first few days after hatching, when the chicks are very young, feedings may occur roughly every two to three hours. On day five for the first baby budgie and day three for the second, their eyes remain closed, but their growth rate is astonishing. I was expecting a third chick, so I checked the eggs again for signs of life. Some eggs may not develop fully, but at this point, I believe only two more have the potential to hatch. Her droppings might appear larger than usual and exhibit a slightly different color as she increases her intake of essential proteins and minerals. Finding a dead or infertile egg in a budgie cage is not uncommon during the breeding process. Do not leave it in the cage, as it can become a source of bacterial contamination. Depending on the type of bedding you use, replace it weekly or as needed. The breeding pair's cage tends to get messier because they have plenty of food, including vegetables and fruits. Daily access to fresh water and a well-balanced seed mix is crucial for maintaining the health of both the chicks and their parents. While you can still treat them occasionally, it's best to limit treats to once a week for their overall well-being. On day six, exciting changes are unfolding as the oldest baby budgie starts to open its eyes. A truly heartwarming moment. From here on, we can anticipate rapid growth and development in these adorable little ones. On day seven for one, and day five for the other, we welcomed our third baby budgie into the world. The larger and older chicks may receive more attention and food from the parents, potentially leaving the smaller chick at a disadvantage. Parent budgies may prioritize feeding the more vocal or active chicks. There is a risk of the older, more active chicks inadvertently trampling or injuring the smaller, younger chick, especially if the nest is small and crowded. It's essential to regularly check the baby bodgie's crops. If you notice one is empty, it may indicate that the female isn't feeding the smallest one adequately. To ensure the survival of the smallest chick, you might need to intervene by removing it from the nest and initiating hand feeding. Fortunately, Angel has proven to be an exceptional mother, diligently taking care of all her chicks, ensuring they receive their meals promptly. On day 8, down feathers are sprouting even more. You can now see the black feathers developing under the skin on their back and head. The chicks are showing increased strength as they can hold their heads up for a few seconds. And the second and third babies are also showing healthy growth. On day 9, since the first baby budgie hatched, they look incredible. They've even outgrown my fort. It's interesting that the smallest baby appears to be the strongest. On day 10, the baby budgies huddle together inside the nest box, keeping each other warm and cozy. On day 10 for the first, day 8 for the second, and day 4 for the youngest, they are thriving thanks to their dedicated parents, Angel and Stubby. I'm eagerly looking forward to seeing their feather colors emerge very soon. On day 11, we encounter the unfortunate part of this breeding series as the third baby bodgie has sadly passed away.
It was a unique and unexpected type of death, with signs of the crop spilling inside the chick. It's not uncommon for some baby budgies to pass away inside the nest box, typically happening to the smallest or last one. Despite the small one doing well, there are certain things that can't always be prevented. So, I'm left with my first budgie at 11 days old and the second one at 9 days old. They are thriving, well fed and their feathers are gradually starting to emerge. Now, it's time to change and clean the nest box. This not only prevents bacteria and diseases among the baby chicks, but also promotes better development and growth. Sufficient bedding can help prevent splayed legs in the chicks. I use organic cat litter as bedding, which absorbs liquids and dirt effectively. Splayed legs are a condition where a chick's legs are splayed or spread out to the sides instead of properly positioned under its body. To prevent splay legs, provide a proper nesting material and a flat, non-slip surface for the chicks to rest and move on in the nest box. He's showing off his wings and soon he'll even be able to take his first flights. This stage marks when they become more aware of their surroundings and they'll soon begin to explore their nest. Mother Angel is wasting no time. She's eating well and dedicated to feeding her chicks. She's doing her best to guide her little ones on the right path for their future. Some of your budgie eggs may have remained infertile, while others might not have fully developed due to factors like improper incubation, genetic abnormalities or environmental stress. It's advisable to remove any unfertilized or unhatched eggs to prevent the spread of bacteria. Budgie is engaging in preening behavior, a natural activity that helps maintain its feathers and is essential for its overall health and comfort. On day 12, the chick's feathers are still growing, covering more of its body. At this point, you can start to make a guess about the budgie's wing color. I'm assuming they will be green or yellow, following the dominant trait typically seen in budgies, with green as a dominant color and white as a recessive trait. They enjoy being held in hand, mainly because of the warmth it provides. On day 13, and for the second one, it's day 11. The baby budgies have become much more aware and comfortable. They even perch on my hands when I hold them. Their bodies are now almost entirely covered in fluffy, soft feathers. By looking at the colors of the pin feathers on their wings, I can assume they will be similar, like twins. It's heartwarming to see Mila enjoying the company of the budgies. While it's true that you can give budgies kisses, it's important to be cautious and remember that human saliva is toxic to them. <laughs> on day 14, the baby budgies still rely on their parents for food to support their growth. While it may seem like nothing's changing, they've grown significantly from when they were tiny. Their feathers are also sprouting rapidly, and you can observe daily changes in their growth. The female will continue to care for the baby budgies until they are ready to leave the nest.
On day 15 for the first baby, and day 13 for the second, it's remarkable how just a two-day difference results in distinct feather growth, making it easy to distinguish between them. Baby budgie pin feathers, also known as emerging feathers or blood feathers, are an essential part of a young budgerigar's growth and development. Baby budgies typically grow pin feathers rapidly. As pin feathers emerge, they can cause itching and discomfort for the young budgie. To relieve this discomfort, budgies will often use their beaks to preen and help the feathers unfurl. Parent budgies play a crucial role in assisting their chicks during the pin feather stage. They gently groom and preen their offspring, helping to remove the protective sheaths and aiding in the development of mature feathers. Mother Angel continues to sleep and rest in the nest box, always ready to assist her babies if they need her. It's day 16 since hatching. The colors of the emerging feathers may differ slightly from the adult feathers. The final coloration becomes more apparent as the feathers mature and the sheaths are shed. As budgies grow and mature, they go through multiple molting cycles throughout their lives. During these times, they shed and replace their old feathers, including the pin feathers. On day 17, their feathers continue to sprout and they're beginning to resemble miniature adult budgies. They're becoming more affectionate, seeking comfort in my hands and enjoying the attention. On day 18, the growth of their feathers is even more pronounced. It's becoming evident that they won't inherit the blue or white genes like their mother. They're taking after their father with vibrant yellow and green colors. On day 19, for the first and 17 for the second, the second one is already practicing to strengthen its wings for flight even though there aren't enough feathers yet. Their feather growth is progressing rapidly, and it's only a matter of a few more days until they are fully covered. On day 20 since hatching, the baby budgies are standing, attentively listening to their surroundings. Now this is the difference between a 20-day-old chick and a 12-day-old chick. Their feathers have grown beautifully. It's the perfect time to take over feeding the chicks from their parents and start the process of hand taming these budgies. They absolutely love the baby bird feeding formula. On day 21, they've grown into calm and gentle little birds. However, they're still not ready to leave the nest and feed on their own. On day 22 for the first budgie and 20 for the second since they hatched, their growth over the past five days has been remarkable. Feathers now cover their entire wings and heads, and in the coming days, they will experience rapid growth on their backs and fronts. On day 23, they're still lacking the strength to perch on my finger. Their behavior reveals that the first one is more shy and cautious, while the second is more confident and adventurous. But one thing they both agree on is that being on warm hands is the best place to be. On day 24, I can hardly wait for them to start eating seeds on their own. On day 25, they're still in the nest, dependent on their parents. However, they've become more active, exploring their nest. Most of their time is spent grooming their newly grown feathers. These feathers are smoothing out and taking on a much softer appearance. The mother is clearly proud of her grown chicks. On day 26 for the first and 24 for the second baby budgie, let's compare their growth to day 10. In just 16 days they've grown significantly. They're still babies, being cared for by their mother, and it's heartwarming to see them groom their mother to say thank you. 
On day 27, these little birds are incredibly cute. Their entire bodies are nearly covered in feathers with just a small patch remaining on their backs. They're almost ready to start eating on their own. On day 28 for the first and 26 for the second, their whole bodies are now covered in feathers. And you might even discover them exploring outside the nest. I placed a shallow bowl of seeds inside the nest to test if they were ready for taming. It's much easier to tame baby budgies that haven't yet learned to fly. The mother showed them how to eat and open seeds, and soon they joined in. On day 29 for the first and 27 for the second baby budgie, they are becoming almost independent birds. Finally, on day 30, my first hatched baby budgie ventured out of the nest. This signifies that they are now ready to live independently. As for my second budgie, today marks 28 days since hatched. The next stages involve molting and sera color change. Let's compare day 1 to day 30 to observe these developments. As they are now feeding on their own, it's time to separate them from their parents. While it might sound a bit sad, this is a normal step in the process as we prepare to tame and hand feed them. The growth stages are now complete, but I'll see you in the next episode where I'll be focusing on taming these baby budgies. When taming budgies, it's important to remember that patience, time, and daily interaction are key. However, there are instances when older budgies may have deep traumas from previous experiences with hands or captivity, making taming more challenging. In such cases, hand feeding them delicious foods they can't resist can be a solution. On the other hand, baby budgies have no choice but to rely on you as they can't yet fly and they'll gradually start trusting you, even if they initially hide in a corner. Baby budgies only trust and recognize their parents, and to them, you might appear as a potential predator. They don't know anything about you, so building trust is essential. As for the parents, their hard work of keeping the chicks fed is over, and I can now remove the nest from the breeding cage. They'll have a day of rest before the pair are reintroduced to their flock. Breeding budgie pair should be resting until the next breeding season after a year. The flock welcomed the return of their members. And they truly shine living together in the spacious aviary. This separation of breeding pairs from the rest ensures there will be no fights between females in the aviary. Ensuring there is water available in the box where you're keeping the budgies is essential and it's important to check if they are drinking properly. You can also offer them water by hand as you're now their caregiver and teacher. Pay close attention to the budgie's body language. If they show signs of fear or stress, give them space and time to calm down. Baby budgies are more receptive to taking food from your hand at this age. And millet is their favorite food, even for babies. Frequent, positive interactions with the budgie are key to building trust and forming a strong bond. Spend time near the box, talking softly and offering treats. Always handle the baby budgie with extreme care and gentleness. Their bones are still developing, so avoid squeezing or putting too much pressure on their fragile bodies. As you can see, Mila, who is almost three years old, is incredibly gentle when handling the baby budgies. Simply placing your budgies near you in the living room is sufficient to teach them that you are a friend and your place is their safe place as well. These two are from last year's breeding season and interestingly, they look almost identical to my new babies. On day 31, since the first baby budgie hatched, morning hand feeding is the best time when they are hungry and eager to eat. Offering them a seed mix from your hand and spending time with them is a wonderful and positive bonding experience. 
They still enjoy the warmth of your hands so much that they even fall asleep in them. Skipping a day or two without any interaction with the chicks can undo all your taming progress and require you to start over. Identifying their gender can be a bit tricky, but it seems like this one is a girl while the other is a boy. Budgies are social flock birds, and establishing yourself as part of their flock is essential for building a lasting friendship. While you can provide food in a dish, make sure they are always close to you during this bonding process. This plastic container may be small, and you can use a cage, or, as I'm planning, the bottom side of the cage. Once they learn to fly, I can install the top side. I'll continue to use the same bedding from my nest box, Cat Litter Bioorganic, as it works great for cleanliness and absorbs liquids efficiently. It's normal for them to flap their wings as they become stronger and prepare for their first flight. By observing their behavior, you'll notice that over time, they will start looking to you to take them, to feed them, they'll need you. Enjoy these moments. By the way, she's definitely a female. Biting my fingers quite hard. Vitamin E promotes a bird's overall metabolism, muscular, nervous, and immune systems. It's been 32 days or 4 weeks since hatching. They're eating and drinking on their own now. They'll even attempt to fly, so be cautious of open windows and keep them closed. Their primary diet consists of a seed mix, but you can also introduce fruits and vegetables at this stage. On day 33 since hatching, their wing strength is improving, allowing them to fly short distances. While they might not show strong interest in fruits initially, it's important to introduce them to these foods as they will curiously nibble on them. Feeding and spending time with your budgies is a daily process, and it's crucial for successful taming. This loop of interaction and care continues every day. When they're ready to fly, I'll introduce them to the others and they'll experience the beauty of freedom in their spacious aviary. Budgies truly shine when they have lots of room to fly and enjoy life with their flock, along with plenty of toys for their happiness. You are awesome. Thank you for watching and subscribing. See you in my next video.